Law number 16 is the law of the Big Mo. The law of the Big Mo says momentum is a leader's best friend. I have found this to be very true. In fact, with momentum, here's what I have found. With momentum, you can solve problems so much easier than if you don't have momentum. So let's talk about it for a moment and uh, grab hold of your notes for a moment and we'll, I'll walk you through some fill in the blank stuff and then I want to do some teaching. Uh, first of all, many times the only difference between winning and losing is momentum. Let, let's understand what momentum will do for you. Just as the law of tu intuition gets a leader started quicker so that that leader can win the race, the law of momentum sustains the victory longer. Momentum allows you to, to be successful for a longer period of time. An expression they use in the sports world, and you've all heard it, is when a team has, has got momentum, the, 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 the sportscasters will say something about, like, they're playing over their heads. What's it mean when they say you're, they're playing over their heads? What it really means is they've got momentum going for them. And, and when they've got momentum going for them, things began to turn out great. And here's why. In your notes, momentum is the great exaggerator. In other words, momentum takes what is and exaggerates it. Stay with me in your notes. Momentum makes leaders look better than they are. <laughs> That's why I call it a leader's best friend. In other words, think about it for a moment. Just stop for a moment. When you've got momentum, people think you're better than you really are. And isn't it fun to be a leader and have your people think you're really better than you really are? You know, and, and they're just saying, oh, my goodness, the, you know. What a leader. And, and, and you, you realize that you're not quite that good. Now, you don't want to stop the momentum and tell people that. But it's a great exaggeration. It makes the leader look better than he or she is. And momentum makes followers perform better than they are. It, it allows followers to perform more than that. So what you always want to do is you always want to have momentum because momentum is the leader's best friend. Now, let me just take, do the reverse for this for a moment. When you have no momentum... Or, or you have negative momentum. Remember, Paul Harvey is the one who said, you can tell you're on the road to success. It's uphill all the way. So every once in a while, I'll run to people and say, you know what? This is just great. We, we're, we're, just, we're, just, we're just, it just seems like everything's coming automatically. Well, that means they're, they're going downhill. And it's only a matter of time. Now, let me tell you something. When you lack momentum, just as positive momentum exaggerates things in a positive way, negative momentum exaggerates things in a negative way. So, no momentum makes leaders look worse than they are, and no momentum makes followers perform worse than they are. In other words, momentum is the great exaggerator. If you've got it, you look better than you really are. If you don't have it, you look worse than you really are. Now, what I want you to understand about momentum is this. With momentum, it takes less energy to solve problems. What discourages organizations more than anything else is problems. What discourages people more than anything else is problems. And so what happens is that when problems begin to bog you down, it seems like momentum begins to ebb. Now, the reason for that is, is the fact that the problem becomes bigger than the momentum instead of the momentum becoming bigger than the problem. So let, let me explain to you the difference. Here's the difference. What I have found in teaching leadership is this. Managers deal mostly with problems. That's just the nature of who management is. They deal a lot with problems. And nothing wrong with that because you've got to deal with problems. Where management deals with problems and, and works on problems, what I found is leaders, they work on momentum. Leaders know that if they can create momentum, many of the problems they have in their organization will be solved. Let, let, let me explain to you what I mean. Here we go. A train, a train going down the track, 55 miles an hour. I mean, that train, okay, that train just come. A train going down the track, 55 miles an hour, can crash through a five-foot-thick concrete wall, steel reinforced. I mean, reinforced. It'll crash through that concrete wall and just keep on going. Why? Because it has momentum. It's moving down the tracks. A five-foot-thick concrete wall, steel reinforced, can't stop that train because it has momentum. That same train stopped dead on the track without any momentum at all. You can put a one-inch block in front of the driving wheels, and that same train that could crash through a five-foot-thick concrete wall, steel reinforced, that same train with a one-inch block in front of its driving wheels cannot even get started. 
This is a huge example of momentum. It works the same in companies. If you've got momentum in your company, you know what you can be doing if you've got momentum? You can smash through a five-foot-thick concrete wall, steel reinforced problem, and keep on going. If you don't have momentum in your company, you know what happens? I can promise you, if you don't have momentum in your company, there could be a one-inch problem, and you can't even get started. That's why I tell people all the time, your problem is not your problem. In fact, the problem is, people think the problem is the problem. And the problem is not a problem, but because you think the problem is the problem, you work on a problem that's not a problem, and the problem that wasn't a problem now becomes a problem, not because it was a problem, but the problem is you didn't know the problem wasn't a problem, so the problem that wasn't a problem has become a problem because you didn't know the problem wasn't a problem. So now you have a problem that wasn't a problem that is now your problem because you didn't know the problem wasn't the problem. <laughs> So melancholic in the back is raising her hand saying, John, could you repeat that one more time? <laughs> I, I didn't quite get all of it. I didn't get it. Now, here's what I'm saying, very simple. You can either spend your life working on problems, or you can spend your life creating momentum. If you're going to be a leader, you're going to create momentum, I guarantee. You. You're going to create momentum because you know that momentum will solve almost all of your problems. Here's the way this works. Momentum will solve your problems, but if you deal with problems, you'll never get momentum. So you've got to get on the momentum side, and leaders understand that. Leaders realize that you've got to work on momentum. If you want to be successful, you've got to work on momentum. That's just where it is. So, because, see, there are two kinds of people, and this is so important. It's in your notes, because I want you to be sure to get it. There are two kinds of people. First of all, Leaders are like thermostats. They control the temperature. And followers are like thermometers. They record the temperature. And you've got to ask yourself the question, am I going to set the temperature? Am I going to create momentum as a leader? Or am I basically going to go around and record what the temperature is like most followers? And this is a very important issue. So what I want to do is I want to talk to you about if momentum is so important because it helps solve most of the problems in the organization, how do I, as a leader, create momentum for my company? How do I create it for my department? How do I create it for my organization? How do you move the big mo? In the Laws of Teamwork book, one of the 17 laws of teamwork that I write about is the law of the big mo. I talk about morale. I talk about high morale. And you know what I say about high morale? When you're winning, Nothing hurts. Isn't that the truth? Boy, you see a team winning. You don't see a team walking slowly off the football field. Oh, it was a rough game. No, no. They're jumping up and down. They're excited. You know why? Because they got the big mo. They've got momentum. When you're winning, nothing hurts. Can I tell you something? When you don't have momentum, it works like this. When you're losing, everything hurts. Isn't that the truth? So how do you move the big mo? How do you get it going? Number one. Understand its value. Understand the value of momentum. As a leader, you've got to understand. And, and the best way I can explain it, if you'll let me use a sports analogy again, what happens to coaches? Well, let's say, for example, I'm coaching and my team is losing. And all of a sudden, we've lost momentum. And the other team is pouring up, uh, just, count, just, just pouring on the points. Okay, well, what, what do teams that are losing momentum, what's the coach do when the team starts losing momentum? Calls timeout. Now, why did the coach call timeout. Very simple. They realize that momentum is getting away from them. I wish every leader would understand what a coach understands. When you're losing momentum in your organization, call timeout. It's time to huddle. It's time to talk about the issues. Don't put your head in the sand and act like it's not happening. Say, look, we're not doing well. Let's talk about it. Let's turn this around. Let's get the big mo going for us. So, number one, understand its value. Number two, Figure out what the motivating factors are in your organization. Just figure them out. There are certain things in your organization that motivate your people. You say, as a leader, I don't know what they are. It's very simple. Ask your group. Get to your team. If this is, again, if this is my leadership team, I'm going to go down. I'm going to say, okay, let me ask you a question. What motivates you? What really gets you excited? What, what gives you energy? They're going to tell you. They'll tell you what motivates them. They'll tell you, they'll tell you what momentum they need in their life. 
to go forward. So figure out the motivating factors. Number three, remove the demotivating factors in your organization. Now, we just did the opposite. You're feeding in the motivating factors, the demot. For example, I may be talking to my team. Hey, my, what, what's your name? John. John. I may be talking to my team, and I say, okay, John, let me ask you a question, John. Um, what demotivates you? And, you? and John may say, you know what? In our company, it takes too long for me to get an answer. Man, you know, three weeks ago, I want to know about something. I'm still waiting on the answer. All the bureaucracy and all the stuff, all the paperwork, I hate that stuff. And so I say, okay, John, one of your demotivating factors, obviously, is bureaucracy and too much paperwork. So what do I do as a leader? I say, okay, let's see how we can give you direct lines so you can get your answers. Okay, what I'm saying is leaders instill motivating factors to get the momentum going, and they remove demotivating factors. Number four, schedule times for direction and celebration. In other words, when you win, have a party. And when you have the party, always give them direction for the next step. One of the greatest mistakes I find in celebrating is too many organizations celebrate and it's just an end in itself. When you have a party over a victory, at the end of that party, say, you know what, let me share with you where we want to go next. Always give direction at your celebration times. Always say, this is our next level. This is where we're going to go. Because the people are already, they already have momentum. They feel they can win. They feel successful. They feel good about themselves. They've got a victory under the belt. That's the time to give them the next challenge. Number five, recognize and honor people who move the ball forward. Very simply put, find the people who move the ball forward, give them the credit, recognize them, get them up in front of the people, very important. And by the way, if they're not moving the ball forward, don't applaud. It amazes me in so many organizations how we affirm people that aren't doing a good job. You've never seen a coach when a ball player fumbled, stand on the sidelines and, and clap and say, that a way to go. <laughs> no, 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 no. So you recognize and affirm those who are doing the job. And number six, practice what I call character leadership. And I would define character leadership this way. Character leadership is when I lead with enthusiasm and hope, and the future doesn't seem very bright. In other words, the average person, when things don't look good, they sag. Leaders, they suck it up and move forward and get positive, and they lead whether they feel good or not. Quit waiting to feel good to lead. Quit waiting for your first victory. If you've had a loss, put it behind you. Keep going. Have character leadership. Understand that as you go, so will the team go.